So duck hunting season has finally come to an end, and you know what that means. It's time for long walks on the beach and days at the park and spending time with our girlfriends, right? Wrong! It's time to get ready for the next season! Welcome back to Swamp and Stomp, guys, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up your decoys and pick out a spot to get ready for a duck hunt. If you want a chance to win both of these shirts for free, all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. And if you want to get more entries into this raffle, just click right here to get more info about the raffle. Now you might feel that I'm doing this backwards because it's important to pick out a spot before you know how to set up your decoys, but there's a reason that I'm talking about this first, and it's because the season is ending, and this is the perfect time to be buying new decoys because there's a lot of sales going on and there's a lot of people that are selling them used. So get on some Facebook groups and ask people if they're getting rid of decoys so you can pick some up really cheap. So the point of hunting with decoys is to try to fool ducks into thinking that your spread is safe and they want to come in and land. So we're really trying to take shots at birds that are within 20 to 30 yards away from our blind. Now in order to make that happen, we need to think about two main things. And the first is figuring out where the ducks want to land. But as I mentioned before, I'm gonna cover that in a different video in a couple months. And once I make that video, you can find a link to it right here. The second thing that you need to think about is how to set up your decoys and your blind in order to get those birds as close as possible to take your shot. So let's assume that we already know number one, we know where the birds wanna land. Now let's set up for a hunt. Now the first thing I like to think about in picking my blind is where the sun is going to be during the hunt. Now in this case, the sun is over my shoulder, so we're gonna set up our makeshift blind here, right back here in these bushes. And the reason for that is that when a bird is coming into your decoys and that sun is behind you, you're gonna be shaded and they're gonna be blinded by the sun, so they're not gonna see you at all when you're getting ready to take your shot. So assuming our blind is back here, I first like to pace out 20 to 30 steps to figure out how far away I want those decoys to be. And I like to do it this way because in the dark, everything looks way closer. So you might look at your blind and go, yeah, I'm way far enough. But when the sun comes up, suddenly they're sitting right in front of you. I like to start with a really small group of them. And the reason for that is because in the STAs, a lot of times you'll set up and then some other people will come in, come in there and set up near you or uh, you, know, you just won't like the spot that you're at once the light comes up. So I usually set up just about six coot decoys and I've mentioned this before, in the STAs, coots are king. They are definitely the most abundant waterfowl in the STAs. If you're in a spot and you've been hunting and the birds are not as interested and you kind of want to move things around or move to a different spot, only having those six decoys out is going to make it really easy for you to pick up and get going to a different spot. Keep in mind that when you're setting up your spread, you want to keep it as realistic looking as possible. So early season, I like to set up a big spread with lots of decoys. But later in the season, as these birds have been being shot at a little bit more, I tend to see smaller groups, so I'll use smaller groups of decoys when I set up as well. So let's say that we just hunted for the first 30 minutes to 45 minutes of the morning, and we've got birds swooping in and they are really interested in the spot that we're at and our decoys. Now it's time to put out the rest of the decoys and get these birds to land. So this is a pretty typical spread that I'll use when I'm hunting in the STAs. Like I said, I'm about 30 yards away from the blind and this is the kind of setup I would use on a pretty windy day. And the reason for that is that I've created a landing strip for the birds to land in. The wind right now is blowing from the east to the west. And so birds are often gonna land into the wind because they don't have to fly as fast when they're coming in for their landing, so it's just a lot easier. So when it's really windy, chances are the birds are gonna to wanna to come from that side and land in this direction. So what I've done here is I've created a little U shape out of my decoys with a landing strip right here in the middle. So that way when the birds come in, you know they're gonna come in just like this and they're gonna try and land right here, you're gonna know exactly where they're coming from, how they're gonna land. It's gonna be a lot easier for you to take aim, follow, and shoot. So generally speaking, I like to separate out different kinds of ducks. So in this U that I just showed you, 
there's a lot of dabbler ducks. I've got teal, uh, both blue wing and green wing. I've got widgeons mixed in as well. Um, and really any dabbler ducks that you have, you could mix in with this U. Then over here, I like to keep my coots clustered together. Now, the reason for this is generally when you see coots in the wild, they're rafted up in really tight groups and they're not really mingling with other ducks. Now, sometimes the ducks will mix with them, but for the most part, it's gonna be coots. So I like to keep them in a little cluster by themselves on the back side of this U or the landing strip. Now, another type of decoy that I like to separate from the rest of the pack is the pintails. And a lot of people will tell you that pintails are not really social birds. They don't like other species of ducks. They really just wanna hang out with other pintails. So I put them off by themselves on the other side of the landing strip, just so that if there are pintails in the area, they see them, they, they're interested to take a closer look, but it looks a little more natural with them not hanging out with all the other ducks. So that's how I would set it up if there was a lot of wind. But sometimes you get those days when the wind is blowing really slow or it's not windy at all. And then I'll set things up a little bit differently. As you can see, I still have coots on my left and I've got uh, puddle ducks on the right, but I've set them up a little bit differently. As you can tell, I've spread out the decoys a little bit so that there's bigger spaces in between them. You'll find anywhere from like four to six feet uh, distance between each of the decoys. Now, the reason that I do that is because when there's no wind, you really don't know where the ducks are gonna be coming in from to land. And so you wanna give them ample opportunities to land in the decoys. Another reason for spacing out the decoys a little bit more like that is that when they do land in your decoys and you need a water swat a bird, by having a little more space between them, you can pick out little shooting lanes that you can shoot through without hitting your decoys. Dude, you did smoke my decoy on that one. Fuck them decoys. Fuck you. <laughs> and this is Lucy Goosey. Now you might be wondering why the heck am I using a Canada goose while hunting in Florida? Well, you got to keep in mind, these are migratory birds. And when they're flying down across the country, they see plenty of these birds. But because it's so big, I'll sometimes use it as what they call a confidence decoy. And this means that I basically put it down right in front of our blind. And that way, if a bird's coming in and they see us moving to take a shot, they'll just think that it was that goose that moved around a little bit. But really, it was us. So these are some of the formations that I like to use while duck hunting. And if you're an experienced duck hunter and you have some formations that you like to use that have worked well for you, please drop them down in the comments. I'd love to hear about how you do things. It's also important to think about which types of decoys you're setting out. What I showed you today is a great general setup that'll get all kinds of birds to come in, but you might want to target specific species. For instance, if you're going after widgeon in particular, you want to use lots and lots of coots and some widgeon decoys and not a whole bunch of other things. But with widgeons, it's really important that you set up exactly in the spot where they want to be. Pintails don't really like other birds. So if you're specifically after pintails, use only pintail decoys. Now the final thing to think about is the motion in your decoys. If you don't have a lot of wind, your decoys are going to be sitting really still on the water and that's not good. It doesn't really catch the eye of a duck that's flying by. So there are some ways that you could put a little extra motion into your spread. And one of those, which is the, probably the most popular one, is a mojo duck. Now, I'm sure you've seen them. It's like a duck that sits on a post on the water and its wings are spinning. And that way it creates a flicker effect. So when ducks are flying by, they see that, that duck above the water and it gets their attention. Personally, I don't really like them. Every single time I've hunted with them, it seems to just flare out ducks right when they get about to where you want to shoot them. Instead, I like to use these. This is also made by Mojo, but they call it a flock of flicker And it works very similarly. If you push the button here, it starts spinning, and then it stops, and then it spins again, and then it stops, and it'll do that continually. I like to place these in between my decoys. So the way I like to place these is I'll find a cluster of decoys that's pretty close together, and I'll set it down right in the middle of it. And the reason for that is as a duck is flying by and it sees a little bit of a flicker, obviously this doesn't look like a duck, but it's gonna make it look like one or all of these three decoys here are actually moving around and creating ripples in the water. Another way that I like to bring my spread to life is called a jerk string. And you can make these relatively cheaply. Here I have a piece of PVC pipe with a 90 degree coupling. 
and it's cut at 45 degree angle right at the bottom here. The way this works is we'll walk out to the back side of our spread and we're gonna stick it right into the ground. So once you've got your anchor in the ground, I just take a simple bungee cord with a hook on the end and I'll hook that right onto the anchor. Now this bungee cord is hooked up to 400 pound mono and along this piece of mono, I have some crimped loops, if you can see that. And on those loops, I have simple shower rings that I picked up at the dollar store for a whole pack of them. So I'll take this and I'll run this right through the middle of my decoys. And now I'll just pick up some of the decoys that I have laying close to it. And I'll take those shower rings, open them up and clip them off to the decoys. And now I just take some paracord and some sort of earth tone that'll kind of blend in with the plants underneath it. And I tie it to the end of that jerk string. Now I'll run this right back into my blind. And this way, while I'm sitting in my blind, I can tug on this string and it'll start to move my decoys back and forth. So that way when birds are approaching, you just start tugging on this string and it'll actually look like your decoys are swimming around. All right guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you found this helpful. And if you like the content of this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about what we were talking about today, or perhaps some ideas for some new videos, drop a comment below and let us know. So it's almost time for turkey season, and we're gonna start focusing on that. So this is probably gonna be the last duck hunting video that we're gonna do for a little while. But we have lots of great content coming up, including some preparation videos to get ready for turkey season, and some cool DIY projects that we've been planning to do to get ready for next hunting season. So with that in mind, it's a great time to subscribe to our channel and you could do that by clicking right down here. If you wanna watch a video on how to start hunting in the STAs, you can click right up here. Or if you just wanna watch some videos of us actually hunting, down here we have an STA hunt and up here we have a wood duck hunt. Thanks for watching today, guys. We'll catch you next time.